Today on the AI Breakdown Brief, lots of news from big companies. Google has a leaked document about their forthcoming AI plans. IBM is restoring Watson as an enterprise tool. The U.S. Copyright Office is reconsidering how they approach AI and much, much more. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, the headline AI news you need in five minutes or less. We start today with updates from the U.S. Copyright Office. Obviously, AI has been a copyright challenge, and the Copyright Office has updated their guidance. Basically, they wanted to clarify that when humans create works with AI, it can still be copyrighted as long as there is sufficient human creation involved, such as bringing together lots and lots of AI-created inputs into a larger whole whole. What can't be copyrighted right now are things that are entirely created by machines. Now, obviously, copyright is going to be one of the big issues as we figure out how to integrate AI with existing societal norms. Grimes continues to be on the front of this. I saw this quote from her yesterday where she said, I'm actually kind of stressed that people are starting to make competitively or maybe better quality grime sounding songs than I do, but it's also the most wonderfully poetic way to die and respawn in another career. If you want to hear one of those AI grime songs go check out the weekly recap from saturday it has a track from angel baby that uses grimes ai at the end next on the ai breakdown no surprise here but vcs are excited about ai this is from a pitch book survey and they asked in which areas of technology do you expect the most growth and adoption over the next 12 months 36.1 percent said artificial intelligence more than double the second place contender which was climate tech at 18.1 percent now in addition over two-thirds of investors that were surveyed, 70.7% said that they thought that generative AI would spawn unicorns. No surprises there. I would only caution that there is going to be a temptation for people to write off much of AI because VCs are giving it such hype. Don't fall prey to it. Just because VCs are overhyped and are going to invest in things that probably don't deserve their investments doesn't mean that the overall trend isn't correct. Part of why VCs are so keen to invest is that public markets are also recognizing the power of AI. Palantir last week showed off some of its new AI features, and its stock has gone up more than 20% since then. They say that demand for AI tools is unprecedented. Speaking of which, we've been keeping track of Google's plans. Google feels quite far behind, I think especially from where people would have expected Google to be. And this week is their big IO developer conference. Another set of leaked documents from inside. Google gave us some hints about what's coming at I.O., including the update of their large language model, Palm, which they're calling Palm 2, and includes more than 100 languages. That will be used to power Bard, and they're hoping to reclaim some momentum at this event. Speaking of reclaiming momentum, do you guys remember Watson, that IBM early AI product that was created to beat humans on Jeopardy? Well, that business line had basically gone nowhere. In fact, 15 months ago, IBM had sold its Watson Health unit, but now they are bringing the Watson brand back. They've created something called Watson X, and effectively, it is an AI training studio for enterprises. So when enterprises and big businesses need to train their own versions of models, Watson X is supposed to help them do that more easily. CEO Arvind Krishna said, we allow an enterprise to use their own code to adapt the model to how they want to run their playbooks and their code. Then they can deploy it for themselves without any danger of their code leaking. As quick as we might be to write off a legacy competitor like IBM, I wouldn't do so in this case. First of all, I think it's very likely that enterprises with highly sensitive and proprietary data are going to want to train their own models. We already see OpenAI starting to talk about a chat GPT offering just for businesses that's private by default. But that next level of privacy and security is just running it on premise with your own uniquely trained models. So I think that there's going to be a market for that. Second, IBM is partnering with Hugging Face, one of the most dynamic players in the space, which is the default home for open source AI models. So there's something interesting there to watch. Finally, a buzzy little prediction that I'm sure will get lots of headlines. AI expert Ben Gertzel says that AI could replace 80% of jobs in the next few years. He said this at a web summit conference, and he said that this was actually a good thing, that humans shouldn't be spending all their time on work that was irrelevant when machines could just do it better. But even that optimistic view still has a really strong sticking point, which is what happens in the transition and how society is able to deal with so much disruption all at once. Neither Ben nor basically 
basically anyone that I've seen has a really good answer to that, but that's the state of the conversation. All right, guys, that's the AI breakdown brief. If you found this useful, please like this video or subscribe to the channel. And of course, you can also listen to this each day at the AI breakdown podcast. I'll see you back here in a bit for the main AI breakdown.